everybody welcome back to my channel my name is Becca if we have never met before and this is my YouTube channel where I talk about all the houseplant things today is going to be a fun video because we are doing some planty DIYs so if you know anything about me you know that I love a good DIY I love to macrame I love to craft I love to make things out of nothing so that is what we're going to be doing today I have three DIYs that we are going to be completing today all in relation to our plants and additionally all all of these DIYs will hopefully be out of things that you might have lying around your home. I am in quarantine right now, so I have not left my home to gather any supplies. Now I will admit I do keep a good stockpile of crafts in my home just because I enjoy doing this kind of stuff. I'm sure that if you don't have these specific items, you could jerry-rig something up to make something similar. If you do end up making any of these De La Plants DIYs, some De La DIYs, if you will, <laughs> I would love for you to take a photo and tag me on Instagram. All right, so without further ado, let's get right into it. Oh, that did not go like I thought it would. <laughs> All right, so the first thing we're going to be utilizing in today's video is this big embroidery hoop. Now there is a center in it and I took it out for this project and maybe I'll use it in a separate project sometime soon. But for this one, my vision is to have a piece of macrame cord kind of going across the top here and then tying some vessels for propagation across it. I think that plants are a really, really beautiful way to decorate our homes, but sometimes there are those walls or those places in our homes that don't get that much light or whatever the case may be. It's a blank wall and you wanna put something there. So a plant is a really, really great way to do that. And I'm hoping that with this DIY, I can accomplish some sort of nice and striking and cute plant wall hanging. All right, so I have my macrame cord. This is a cord that I actually get on Amazon and I always have it linked down in my Amazon storefront in the description box down below. I really love this macrame cord because it's soft, it's cotton. This is the five millimeter length and it is not length, width. And it also has like a little twist braid in it. So if you like that kind of cord, I would really highly recommend this one. So my thought with this is my vessels are probably about this big. So I'm going to need to account for the amount of space that they take up, especially when they have water and they start hanging. So I probably will put this cord probably towards the top, like right here. These are the vessels I'm going to be using. These are all thrifted things. I love thrifting for propagation vessels. So if you are wanting to make something like this, I would definitely suggest thrifting. Or since we're homebound, I think also a mason jar would work really well for this, depending on how you rig it up. But all of these ones have handles, so I'm going to just tie the handle for some of them. And then for others like this one, I'm going to just tie it just a little bit of string around the neck of the bottle. Let's get to working. Okay, so I have fixed my string to be straight across the top here. It looks straight to me, so hopefully it actually is. And you can see here that the knots are kind of unsightly at the back of the hanging, but hopefully we won't be able to see that too well. I mean, ugh, you can kind of see this one. It's not that bad, it could be worse. And then what I'm going to do now is just sort of plan out what order I want these to sit. I think that I want this one to be in the middle. And I'm honestly torn if I should use macrame cord for this or if I should use this like smaller cord. It's kind of just like a, a string, I guess. I think that I'm gonna use this just so that it can look a little bit more invisible. So I'm gonna grab just a long piece because I don't know how much I'm actually going to need and then wrap it a few times around the top here. If you are planning on hanging things that are a little bit more heavy, I would suggest using the macrame cord, but honestly, these don't hold that much water anyway, and it's not going to be very heavy. So I'm just going through and I'm tying a little knot. So now that that is knotted on, I'm going to tie it up here onto this macrame piece here. Now, obviously we know that this is probably going to be pulling down 
because of the weight of the water so we want to account for that when we tie on the string so that is like actually a lot shorter than i thought you can see i have all this string here and i don't actually need it so i'm going to loop this around a few times i the knot let's see what it looks like i'm so nervous will it look bad Ooh, it doesn't look bad she's twisting around a lot but it doesn't look bad this i wish was just a little bit tighter so that it could sit up like this because i know that with even more weight why well, wish when you can just fix it so i'm going to just carefully untie this knot here this might take a little bit but i'm gonna untie this and i'm going to just resituate this top piece so that it is tighter because i just moved these pieces closer to each other and now let's see if i can do this knot and just tie the rope a little bit tighter so now we just tie on all of the other pieces exactly like that and this is so cute i'm gonna cut off this little excess as well but this is looking so good i love it okay so i believe that this propagation station is all finished this is what it looks like and i really really love it actually i think that it is a bit heavier than i envisioned it originally to be but oh all right all right hold on girls <laughs> so i'm really excited to put some plants in here and see what it looks like The next thing we're going to do is make a macrame hanger. A lot of people have asked me for a macrame tutorial and I have made a lot of the macrame that is around my house and on my patio. So I figured that I would show you how I do it, but today I wanted to do something a little bit different and use some beads. I actually thrifted these a really, really long time ago and I have not used them at all. I knew that I wanted to use them for macrame. I actually don't have any macrame hanging inside, so I've kind of drifted away from making macrame hangers, but I have a lot of use for them outside. I have a bunch of them hanging up out there, so I will be able to use these beads to make a new one. And what we're going to be doing is making just a basic macrame hanger with this rope again, and then stringing the beads along the cord. I am going to throw some tape on the ends of where I string the beads through because I am noticing that it frayed a lot as I was pulling the bead through. So your basic macrame hanger consists of two things, rope and a little hoop for you to loop the ropes around. If you don't have a hoop, something like this, this is just like a small two inch in diameter hoop. You can find these on Amazon, you can find them at local craft stores. If you don't have one of these loops already in your home, I will put an example of how you can avoid this. Basically what you will do is you will loop all of your pieces so they will be sitting just over something. It needs to be hanging over something so that you have the loop. And what you're going to do is tie a knot right here so that it secures it. And then when you pull it out, you just have a bunch of these little cords. There's a lot of other more technical ways to do it, but that is how I have seen people do it and it works out really nicely. Let's get into macrame mode. For this specific project, I'm going to be using four pieces of macrame cord that are two body lengths each. So I'm about five foot five inches so i am going to be using my body to just decide how long each piece is going to be there is a woman on youtube who actually does this in her macrame tutorials and i really appreciate the simplicity of that i do have tape measures but i just find this to be so much easier and especially when you're doing something like macrame you want to just get into making the project because it is very time consuming so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my cord and i'm going to measure one body length, kind of stretch my arms because I know I'm a little short, and then grab the end over here, and then stretch one more body length, a little extra, and then I'm gonna cut that piece. From there, I'm going to cut all of my pieces this length, and this should definitely be enough cord for us. So what we're going to do when we are finished cutting all of our cord is looping it around our hoop, or our object if you don't have a hoop, and securing them on like this. So let me cut the rest of these and I'll get back to you. All right, so I have my four strands all cut. There is something that most macrame artists have the luxury of that I do not have. And that is mostly because my house is so small and I don't want to bring in another object in here, another big object. And that is a clothing rack or something like that. Something that you can work off of upright. But for today, I'm just going to be taping it to the end right here. 
so that I can stay in this room and you can see what I'm doing. So you can see here, I've got all my loops. I'm going to make sure that they are all even. So what we're going to do to get the party started is grab a piece of cord that is maybe one and a half to two feet long. And we are going to start this top knot. I will have the name of the actual knot on the screen. So what you wanna do is bring this cord right here up to the top. And this is the cord that's going to secure all of these pieces together. So it's really a, an important piece. So I usually take about the length of my four fingers and I wrap it up and then you're going to hold on to that. And then you're going to pull that piece of cord around and keep looping it. Make sure you're pulling it tight. Make sure that you hold on to this little loop here because it, it will create a loop, so you don't wanna lose that. And you are just going to continue to wrap this around and around and around until you reach a point where you can't wrap anymore. Okay, so I've reached the point. So what I'm going to do is, see this loop right here? I'm going to pull this little tail that is left over and I'm going to put it through and pull that. So now the loop is looped around. We're gonna come back to this top tail. So you wanna make sure that this top tail isn't too short because you want to be able to get a grip on it. So what you're going to do now, and this is a lot easier when you are doing the macrame piece upright, what you're going to do is just grab this and pull it up. And that will catch this loop down here and pull it up into this little region right here so that that is secure and it won't be going anywhere. You can see that it kind of just disappears in there. And then you cut off this extra piece and then you just toss that because you don't need it. And it's too short to do anything with anyway. Now that we have all eight pieces here, we're going to take a look at which pieces are close to each other. Okay, so like I said, this is a simple macrame tutorial. We're not doing any crazy knots at all. So if you are looking for something like that, you can jazz it up for yourself, but I'm just doing something really simple because I will be adding on these beads right here and I want to make sure that the beads are the focal point. Next thing we're going to do is just string these beads onto the cord until we feel like there's enough. And I do have a limited number of beads, so I am going to have to be a little bit careful. I might be doing some adjusting later on, just depending on how many I can fit onto each string. As you can see, I have filled up these cords with beads and I'm very, very happy. I used all of the beads except for three of them. Yeah, three. Looks very, very nice. I'm really excited about this. This is like such a fun way to jazz up a macrame piece. But what we're going to do now is tie a knot at the bottom here so that these beads are secure and they're not sliding around. I'm not doing any sort of special macrame knot because we only have two cords. So I'm going to be just doing the first tie when you tie your shoes and then doing it one more time. So loop it around once, loop it around twice, and try not to pull too hard and make this knot like push the beads upwards because that would kind of ruin the fact that we tried to keep it even. <laughs> so now she's all secured and knotted up. It looks really, really nice. So what we're going to do now is we're going to grab a model. So I have this philodendron brantiatum and she's going to be my model and I'm going to just decide about where I need the knots to come together to create the base of the hanger. So what I want is for the beads to end essentially where the pot starts so that the beads are not hanging over the pot. Of course you could do it that way. If you had just an abundance of beads, you could connect these together and then put even more beads on it and make it like an entirely beaded hanger. This is heavy. <laughs> so you would need a lot of beads and probably a very, very strong hook because this feels heavy, honestly. I know I just said that, but it actually does feel like it has a lot of weight to it. So just note that if you are making one with beads. So I have marked approximately where I want the next knot to start. And I'm going to be doing this exact knot one more time. Nothing special, nothing crazy at all. This macrame hanger is very, very simple. Grab two pieces that are neighbors, and then you grab the strings that are closest to each other in that neighbor relationship. And you tie that same exact knot 
that you just did so that now we're sort of creating a little bit of a net for the pot to sit in. When I am making a macrame hanger laying down flat like this, I prefer to not tie these super, super tight so that I can move them up or down and adjust when I do lift it back up. Knots are tied and surprisingly enough, this is very, very even. Thank goodness. The last step in this process is just tying off the bottom here with the same knot that we made up here. I want this bottom piece to be just a little bit longer, so I'm going to pull this piece down more so that it sits about right there. And I also got a longer piece of cord, so this one's probably two to three feet long. And then you just start wrapping around like we did at the top. And that, my friends, is a completed macrame plant hanger. Now that I am at the other side of the making process, I know that I didn't need as much cord as I cut. But the thing is, it's better to have too much cord than too little cord. And I have ran into situations where I ran out of cord and it was so crappy. And honestly, I can untie a lot of this and make a sort of fringy bottom and I think that'll look really nice. All right, you guys, so we have made it to our last plant DIY of the day. I hope that you've been enjoying this video. This next one is extremely accessible. I know that we all have something that we could use for this specific project. What you're going to need for this project is a can of any sort. I prefer to use LaCroix cans because I drink a lot of LaCroix. Mango is my absolute favorite, but if I had to choose a second place, I would have to say passion fruit. It's absolutely delicious. So first of all, you need to drink your drink. Make sure there is nothing left in it. And we're going to use a can opener to open up the top. Now here's a can opener story you didn't think that you needed. I am a left-handed individual. To be as dramatic as possible, I have felt like I've grown up in a world that was not made for me. There are so many things in this life that are perfect for people who are right-handed, but I think there just wasn't thought about those of us who are left-handed. Something that was always very difficult for me was using a can opener because can openers that you buy in the store are right-handed can openers. I did find out that there are like entire left-handed stores, but none in my area, and I've yet to make an online order. With that being said, it has taken me a very long time to learn how to use a can opener, so the fact that I just opened these, no problems at all, I'm really proud of myself. So now that you have two hollowed out LaCroix cans or whatever can you're using, you're going to flip them upside down. You're going to get a sharp object of some kind. You probably could use a drill for this, I'm not sure. So what I have here is a hammer and this screw and I'm going to just stick this on here and I'm going to create a drainage hole. All right, so now that we have made drainage holes, all that is left to do is add your plant of choice. <laughs> I know that some of us might not have plants that are this small, but something that I did early on in my plant journey was I got all of my roommates to save their LaCroix cans and I had just a bunch of different flavors of LaCroix and I potted a bunch of small cactus in them and they actually lived and they were very, very, very happy. I just ended up taking them out to pot them into other places. But I think that this is such a cute way to reuse the these aluminum cans. I'm not sure how the aluminum will affect the plants long term. I have had a plant in one of these for probably a year and nothing negative happened as a result. All right, you guys, that is going to be all for this video. Thank you so, so much for hanging out with me today. I really had so much fun making all of these DIYs. They are all things that I am so excited to use in my home. And I hope that if you make any of these, you will send me a photo on Instagram. I'm really excited to see your creations from these tutorials. And honestly, if you're like me and you just like watching these kinds of videos, <laughs> Well, here you go. You're welcome. <laughs> if you liked this video, there is definitely a lot more where that came from. You can hit the subscribe button to be notified when I upload new videos. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!